Thank you very much. We've reached 400 subscribers. Uh, very motivating and I'm in appreciation and thank you to all of you who support me behind the scenes and who help this channel grow. I thank you all for the comments and for the participation. It means a lot because it gives me motivation to keep it's not it's not easy to keep these videos coming when you know, I'm not getting many views or the subscriber count is not growing. Um, you know, I don't run this as a business or a career or anything like that, so as you all know. So it's just here to spread Dharma, um, share Dharma and 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 uh help out wherever I can. So it's it's nice to see that the channel's growing. Uh, thank you for that. I also want to thank uh, all the people in Sydney, Australia, who took care of me on this recent visit, this brief visit. Sorry if I didn't get around to catching up with everybody. Um, I had a, a few priorities that I had to take care of while I was there. I haven't been back to Australia for quite some time, I think almost four years. So I had a lot of things on my plate and th a lot of things I had to sort out and get done. Now I'm back in Thailand and back at Wat Banjik. So today's uh, talk is about intention and focus. And, and the intention being at the root cause of focus, like what your intention is. Now intention's a deep thing. Um, in Pali we call it jetana, right? Jetana. So, or I think, is, is that in Thai? I'm confused now. But anyway, moving on. Anyway, intention. Intention is a core, is like a, a, I think, a core thought process, a core perception of when you really reflect on something, when you set out. It, I think intention also kind of aligns with purpose. So the purpose of your action or your purpose of your speech, right? Or where your mind's focus is going, the intention is really important. Uh, the, the Buddha talks about intention as a very core issue. Uh, even Ajahn Man talks about uh, the, uh, the importance of intention in everything we do, that it be a pure intention, uh, um, a skillful intention, a wholesome intention. And an intention that is skillful and wholesome with the right focus. Now, I'm starting to replace awareness with the word focus because I think it's more apt in terms of the Pali word sati or sama sati, which is right sati or right awareness i think it's more apt to say focus because i think sati is more about focus of where you're focusing your mind um, at all times i think that is more um, sati than rather than awareness people some people might disagree i think awareness awareness is to me a bit of a ambiguous term a bit of a kind of like a, a term that doesn't it's neither here nor there it doesn't really give any clarity on what awareness is, but I think focus is is clearer. And in the correct definition of sati, um, if we start at with the, the 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 four parameters, for example, in the satipatthana discourse, right, in the in the way of uh, in the path of sati, the path of focus, or the path of awareness, but I want to say the path of focus. There are three things that I've talked about in previous videos, but I'll I'll revise them quickly here. So there are three things we need to be aware of or, or focused on when we're when when we're practicing sati or practicing focus. So we focus on our, our breathing, on our awareness of breath body. We are focused on the four parameters of observation, which are the body, feelings, mind, chitta, and dhamma. And I think loosely that could be uh, defined as phenomena. Now, after that, uh, there's one pertinent thing that we focus on is not clinging to anything in the world. So these are three things that we focus on all the time. That's our sati, our focus. Right Now, I guess awareness has some kind of play in here. I think the, the original authors, when they were trying to, uh, I guess, uh, translate sati, I think they might have played with, they were going back and forth with the, Focus and awareness. Uh, which one? Which word is more apt and which is better? So instead of being too uh, pragmatic here, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll change my mind here and, and start incorporating both. Rather, use both focus and awareness. Because our 
I guess being aware, being aware is one thing, but it's also focus as well. So I hope you understand this little dilemma. It's a little bit difficult to describe what sati is, I think. Um, that's, I think it's focus. I think it's where you're focusing your mind all the time. And this also uh, has a like a kind of intention focus or intention awareness focus. These three things, okay? Intention, awareness, focus. These three things are important in terms of how we communicate with the world and what actions we're sending out. And that denotes the consequences we receive. So this is why intention is a core should be a core focus because really when we send out for example speech uh, in a verbal verbal action or we 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 uh, emit a physical action and what our mind is doing and these three actions combine together which is how we communicate with the world socially right and with ourselves obviously these things are core and very important because these denote consequences so in other words our actions denote consequence actions have consequences right so what what we want to do is have skillful consequences good consequences wholesome consequences so at all times we need to be evaluating our core focus our core intentions in everything we're doing and this is i think the most crucial thing um, when it comes to communication as well not just communication, but if you want to improve your life, if you want to make things better, uh, you know, examining your intention um, at all times before, during, and after the action, whether it be speech, a physical action, or even what your mind is doing. You like, for example, you get a thought, you you question that thought. Is this a skillful thought? Is this a, is this a, is this a thought that uh, you know should be followed, or should I discard it? Like that kind of mental cleansing process where we're uh, constantly having focus on our mind especially when we're trying to develop concentration and we're trying to develop the right view having the right view for example is, is the core focus is intent is not only uh, i guess intention but also understanding things as they are which is which is a mixture of examining core focus and intention and views and this all kind of it's all kind of like to me uh, a salad here where it's like a, a, a word salad and, and we're jumping from one to the other, one to the other, but they're all important and we need to know them. And I think the Buddha does well at uh, describing this as analysis of qualities or analysis of phenomena where we're analyzing, uh, ve- splicing down our own actions and trying to emit the best possible case scenario for ourselves to have the best possible consequences for ourselves and others around us. It's crucial to have to understand your intention or to understand the intention behind every action that goes that you emit to the world. I think this is core, and I don't think we talk about this enough. So I think uh, right now uh, there's a lot of speaking without a with you know there's a lot of speaking but it's not aligned to the truth or aligned with what you really of what your intention really wants to say and and that's something that a lot of p- people struggle with is actually saying what they what they really mean which is very difficult and expressing that in a way that's not so harsh or so blunt although sometimes that's required but the buddha does warn us about speaking harshly you know, to avoid harsh speech. So, the, you know, in terms of the right speech and in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the law, the, not the law, the right speech is defined as speaking what is accurate, what is factual, what is correct, and at the right time. But also in, the, in one of the precepts, the Buddha talks about abstaining from harsh speech. Now, sometimes... I think that comes in with the how, how to avoid the harsh speech is saying it at the right time so it doesn't come across as harsh, even though it's correct. Because sometimes you could say something that's factual, factual, correct, and in actually as it is, uh, you know, like uh, spot on, but it may be the wrong time. 
and this could come across as being harsh. So we need to develop ourselves, develop our wisdom um, to a deep level when we talk to people because communication is a very important aspect of life it's a very important skill to develop and to master and to uh, develop for yourself I think uh, a lot of us uh, when we talk especially before I was a monk now I've been working on it and working I've got you know a lot of room to improve but before that definitely uh, I would say that my mind my speech uh, and my thoughts were not aligned very well like sometimes i would say something but i would in in deep inside my mind it, it's 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 not it's not what i should be saying so and this also created consequences which were not very good so as being a monk uh being a, a you know ordaining in this practice i've learned very well to really reflect on intention especially when we're speaking on uh, your verbal the verbal the verbal speak i think is very important right in what you uh emit to others what you communicate to others uh we don't want to deceive others i don't think any of us here uh want to be deceived i don't think we want our loved ones to be deceived i don't think anybody wants to be deceived to tell the truth but there are deceivers and i think uh without focus and awareness uh, we could be deceiving others because we're not tuning into our core focus and our and our intention when we speak. We're not aligning the mind with the with the verbal and the physical. We're not aligning these factors, these things, uh, or these qualities. We're, well, they're not really qualities. They're they're inbuilt mechanisms. Uh, uh, you know, they're they're part of the mach- the the human pr- the the human being, right? So with the mind, well, the mind's not. The, the chit is not really part of the human being, but definitely verbal is and, and, and definitely physical actions are, right? So the mechanics of it is understanding the mechanics. But the problem is uh, if you say, no, it's, it's, it's not worth learning the mechanics, the problem is consequences. The problem is the law of action, right? Action consequences. You know, you reap what we sow, right? That kind of thing. That kind of thing we can't avoid. So we have to start paying attention, particularly if you want to improve your life, if you want to improve your consequences, if you want to improve and grow to a better tomorrow and have a better future, a better life, and more so going to heaven or going or, or you know being reborn in heaven, for example, or the mind going to heaven or the mind going to nirvana, for example. Uh, this is intentions are crucial because they're at the core of everything we're doing right and then we're going to get even go even further than that and rip that out completely deep inside the mind when you go in you go down and out through the mind as um, a senior Arjan eloquently said once so you know these kind of things uh, when we're focusing on them we're really going deep into our nature and trying to understand and correct uh, ourselves. So we're, what we're saying and what we're doing, uh, what we're thinking is in line with Dharma at all times. Now, this was a difficult conversation because talking about focus and intention is not easy. It's a deep subject. Uh, I'm trying to keep uh, this video short, but uh, uh, I did a whole speak of this um, uh, sati and, and and intention whilst I was in Sydney so it was a pretty long talk um, so I don't want to do that here but maybe in a in a future video I will but I think that uh, intention intention uh, is something that all Buddhist practitioners all Buddhist people need to uh, focus on you know regularly and, and I mean hourly in everything you're doing your speech your action and where your mind's going, like where, where what thoughts are coming up, um, are they healthy thoughts? Are they thoughts that uh, uh, tend towards uh, a better life? Do they tend towards heaven? Divine thoughts? Are you getting divine thoughts? Is your actions are your actions in line with heaven? There was a monk who was giving a Tama talk, a senior monk, some some time ago, 
and he was saying, if you want to go to heaven, you better practice. You better you better start speaking divine. You better start acting divine. Your mind needs to start thinking divine. Divine, <laughs> you know. So uh, you know you still got to start living in a divine way if you want to go to heaven, right? As opposed to living like an animal, right? Which a lot of uh, humans do, right? You know. So if you want to live like a dog. Well then, that's your that's your prerogative, right? I don't judge you, but uh, if we want to be divine, we, we've got to tune ourselves to the divine. If we want to tune ourselves to nibbana, that great bliss, then that requires even a high level of discipline as well. So, these are things I thought I'd cover in this video.